So what else can we do with VI or Vim? Well, let's go play around with it a bit more. So we'll go back to that file that we were editing. It turns out that if you're in a real VI, the arrow keys might not move you around. In traditional VI, that was not an option. So you, if you ever find yourself in that situation, you move around with H, J, K, and L. So H and L move you side to side, J is down, K is up. Um, you can also do page down, which won't do much for in my short document here, with a control D and page up with a control U. You can move forward one word at a time by hitting W. You can move to the end of the line by hitting dollar sign or to the beginning of the line hitting zero. So those things will move you around again. Once again, it is HJKL to just move around like arrow keys, but not arrow keys. Control D for paging down, Control U for paging up. W advances you one word, dollar sign takes you to the end of a line, and zero takes you to the beginning of a line. Another thing that you might want to be able to do at times is just delete stuff. Of course, you could go into insert mode and hit delete. A single X will do that. A, if I do something I don't want to do, the U undoes the last thing. In Vim, it actually will undo multiple undo. What if I wanted to redo it? Well, Control R is a multiple redo. I can cut lines and copy lines using DD. So DD is a delete a line, but it wasn't just a cut, it was actually a, a, you know, a cut to a clipboard. So if I hit a P, it will do a paste. Now you'll notice this is one line lower. You can paste with either a lowercase P or a capital P. A capital P pastes above the line that you are on. A lowercase P pastes below the line that you are on. What if I didn't want to delete something to the clipboard, I just wanted to copy it? Well, YY will copy, and then once again the P will paste. If you want to delete or copy multiple lines, you just hit the number in front of it. In fact, that's a general thing in VI. If you, if you type in a number and then you do something, so here's a fun one. I am going to type in 10, and then I'm gonna hit Shift A, some text, enter, and when I hit escape, it's gonna repeat that command 10 times. Okay. Uh, so in general, you type in a number and then you do some command and whatever command you did is going to happen that many times. So we delete single characters with X, we delete a line with DD, we copy a line with YY, and we paste either with lowercase p or capital P. Sometimes you want to make two lines into one. A capital J does a join, so that the line joins on with the one above it. If you want to search for something in a file, you type slash and then the thing you want to search for. So I, slash, I did a slash is. And then to find the next one, the letter N takes you to the next. You'll note that it tells me whenever I wrap around to the top. Okay. One of the things that I find most powerful about VI is the fact that while I can make it do a single command multiple times with the numbers, I can also repeat whatever my last command was using a period. So stuff at the end of the line. And then I can come down here and if I hit dot, it will repeat what I had done before again. Um, because I hit capital A to jump to the end of the line and type stuff, whatever line I'm on, even if I'm not at the end of the line, it will automatically put, do the same thing. So it jumps to the end of the line and retypes what I had typed. These types of features can be very handy when you're programming, and they're the types of features that you don't get in something like Notepad. You can also compose commands. And one of my favorite compositions is actually CW. So we said that W allows you to move forward a word. C is for change. And so if I do CW, it actually takes the word that I'm on and I can change it. CW is very nice when you combine it with dot 
because then you can basically find individual words and change them. And so the in, the slash for searching, the in, and the dot can be used to do more complex search and replace uh, quite quickly. So C will allow you to change something. We've already seen that Y does a, a copy, and why Y copied a whole line? Well, it turns out that YW copies, where should I go to put this? Just the word that you're on. Uh, a DW, that looked like a whole line, so I'll do it on this one. DW takes out one word and deletes it. Instead of a W, you can use the dollar sign to either change or delete or copy everything to the end of the line, a zero to go to the beginning of the line. So uh, you can compose those. Like I said, CW is the one that I use the most because I actually find that a lot of times I do want to change individual words. Another thing that you have to do a fair bit in programming is you want to jump to a specific line. If you type in colon and then the line number, so if I want to jump to line We'll go to line four, colon four, and hit enter will take me there. So that's kind of the basics of VI. And there's one other thing that I want to show you because let's go ahead and right quit out. A lot of times when you're programming, let's go ahead and do this. You use, you indent things. And I like to indent with tabs. By default, your tabs are going to be eight characters. And you can see here, mine are clearly not eight. I have mine set to two. You might wonder, how can you do that? Well, set, tab stop, equal eight. Now if I hit tab, it goes over eight. Um, I don't really like that. And I don't want to have to do that every time that I enter in. There is a file called .exrc that, if it doesn't exist, you create it in your home directory. Now, I'm not in my home directory, but I can get there by putting tilde slash .exrc. And you'll see that I have one thing in this file. I say set tab stop equal to two. That way, all of my tabs will be two. So you should feel free to use VI to edit a .exrc in your home directory. and set whatever tab stop you, you want. There are, of course, other options. And if you want to learn more about this, obviously you can man VI to get some information. You might notice that there, that, uh, there are actually various tutorials that, that exist, and there is um, some help that you can go through. So it turns out that, that Vim has so many options to it. There are entire books written about Vim. We just wanted to cover the key features, the things that I know that I want my students using a lot and that I use a lot when I'm actually programming.